Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to the second stock analysis video for today. Now we have another one here in the form of Ecolab which is brought up by Doug Gilmore where he pretty much just said I would be interested in seeing a review of ECL. So let's take a look at this company guys and see well first of all what do they do because I'm not really certain of what they do. Take a quick look of their earnings summary as well as their fundamentals and see if at the current share price it is a buy. So with that said let's get started with this analysis. So first things first, it is to see what in the world this company does. Ecolab provides water hygiene and infection prevention solutions and services in the United States and internationally. The company operates through global industrials, global institutional and specialty and the global healthcare and life and sciences segments. The global industrial segment offers water treatment and process applications and cleaning and sanitizing solutions to manufacture food, beverages, processing, transportation, chemical metals, and mining. So pretty much guys from what it's looking like is they make a special types of like I guess water for like hygiene to like clean stuff with that's actually again really niche I was not even aware of this but that's actually pretty cool overall I mean you know this kind of industry is, is again one that I don't think will ever go away right I don't think that will ever go away so it's really really good. So with that, now let's actually see the last quarter's earnings. They had earnings on the 1st of November, so we'll probably see this again in February. And we can see that the EPS normalized actual was in line at $1.30. EPS gap actual $1.21, which is a miss by $0.07. Cents. Revenue actual $3.67 billion, which is a beat by $13.75 million. So with that, let's come into the calculator, the ticker symbol of ECL, market cap of $42.57 billion and a PE of 38.08 with a current share price of $149.46. So just from that guys, this is telling me that this is very, very expensive. And even looking at this, they were down on the one year 35.15% and on the year to date, they're, well, they're up 1.53%. But again, there's only been like six days so far this year. 52 week range is 131 to $229. So we are fairly, fairly close to 52 week lows when it comes to this. Now they do pay out a dividend of $2.12, which is a yield of 1.42 with a payout ratio of 45.33, five year CAGR of 6.27 with almost 30 years guys of dividend growth. Very, very good. They are a dividend aristocrat though. The five year CAGR, we have seen companies with a much bigger five year CAGR with even with just as much as dividend growth. I'm not saying that this is bad. I'm just saying that like, you know, 6.27%, we have seen a much bigger CAGR before. Ex dividend date passed as of December 19th. Payout date is actually going to be in 10 days on January 17th and they pay their dividends quarterly. Based off of this dividend and the amount of shares outstanding, they pay out $603.78 million, which based off of their five-year average free cash flow after this is paid, they're still left with $760 million. And as of last year's free cash flow, it is $237.12 million. These payout ratios are 71.8% for the last year's free cash flow and 44.27% for the five-year average, meaning that I don't even need to take a look at the graphs. The five year average, the fact that this is lower than the last year's, tells me that their cash flow went down last year by a significant amount. So we'll take a look at this now when we go into the fundamentals. So now let's actually come over here into the fundamentals, starting of course with the net income, guys, five years ago of $1.4 billion to one year ago of $1.13 billion. That is a decrease of 21%. Three years ago, they were negative $1.21 billion. Not going to fault them for this because this one was COVID was happening. But take a look at this, guys. Ignoring COVID year, they've only had one year where they went up. And that was five to four years ago. From four to two to one year ago, pretty consistent decrease. Not going to lie. Not going to lie at all. And, you know, there really wasn't much of an increase from five to four years ago. So that's not good. Overall, I'm going to have to give this like a 20%. Into the free cash flow, we got five years ago of $1.5 billion to one year ago of $840.9 million. That is a decrease of 44% with an average of $1.36 billion. So again, I was right. The fact that the last year's free cash flow's payout ratio was a lot more than the average means that this year's free cash flow, at least last year's free cash flow, was significantly lower. And boy, was it. In fact, they didn't have the $1 billion mark at all last year. And if you take a look at this also, guys, you can see that they went up from five to four, 
then they came down from 4 to 3, then they went up from 3 to 2, then they came drastically down from 2 to 1. And look at this once again. Looking at the cash map operations from 5 to essentially 2 years ago, they were, you know, roughly at like the $2 billion. And even during COVID, they were they almost did $2 billion. You know, it did go down to $1.86 billion in cash map operations. But I mean, it was COVID. Why did this go down one year ago from 2.1 billion to 1.57 billion? Cash from operations. I'm not looking at capital expenditures. In fact, looking at the capital expenditures, we can see that five years ago was higher than one year ago. Four years ago was higher than one year ago as well. And yet those years, they did a lot better in their cash from operations than this year. That is a major, major red flag. Not only is it going down, but the cash map operation also decreased that year. I have to give this like a 5%. I mean, they had a couple instances where they went up, but overall, this is just not good at all when it comes to their free cash flow. Looking now at the revenue, this was actually looking fairly good five years ago of $12.2 billion, two one year ago of $13.88 billion. There's an increase of 13.57% with a small, very, very small decrease from four to three years ago because of COVID going from $12.56 billion to $11.79 billion. Aside from that, guys, very, very consistent decrease even after COVID the year after that. Take a look at this. 12.73 and four years ago it was 12.56 so overall great great numbers i'm gonna give this a 100 because sure you know they went down here but this was covid related i'm gonna ignore it so 100 i think is justified looking now at the total assets minus the total liabilities currently they're at 7.1 billion dollars however taking a look at this of, of course ignoring the three-year goal value where they went down massively you can see that once again, from four to today, they have been going down. That is the trend. Actually, let's just say it like it is. From five years ago, they've been going down. They had one instant, well, technically two instances where they went up. That was from five to four years ago and then from three to two years ago. But in the grand scheme of things, this is going down, which is again, very concerning, but they are at least in the positive or at least remaining positive within the past five years. Average total assets is $20.45 billion. Average liabilities is $13.18 billion dollars doing this difference we get 7.3 billion dollars roughly 7.27 right 7.3 so i'm gonna give this overall grade of like 35 percent at least we're in the positive but it's declining guys i don't like that at all and now into the cash flow minus the liabilities today as of one year ago they're actually at the lowest point at negative 13.11 billion dollars now again what happened one year ago right their cash flow just completely tanked so that's not surprising in the slightest but take a look at this this is actually going down like pretty much year over year except for one year where they increased it slightly that was five years ago to four years ago and then after that they actually kept decreasing it further and further even from four to three years ago four years ago it was what 10.4 for five billion dollars to three years ago 10.55 billion dollars so is pretty much decreasing overall average cash flow minus the average total liabilities we get negative 11.43 billion dollars i'm gonna give this like a five percent looking now at the shares outstanding we got five years ago of 287.7 million shares to today of 284.8 million shares that is a really tiny decrease of only 1%. And even from the previous year to the current year, two years ago of 286.9 million to today of 284.8 million, it is barely a decrease of three quarters of a percent. And also take a look at this. It's not that they have been consistently decreasing it either in fact from five to four years ago they increased it they actually increased it and then from four to three they decreased it but then from three to two they increased it so you know they had instances where they're increasing it the instances where they are decreasing it i don't know where this is going overall on the five year guys one percent isn't that good i'm gonna have to give this like at around i'm not fully sure i would say like a 40 no, I would say like around like a 50%. No, no, you know what? No, no, 45%. I would say 45% because I mean, the general trend, I guess it is to go down, but it's just not that consistent in my personal opinion. And when it comes to the cash equivalents, they currently hold $213 million with an average of $363 million. When it comes to the overall grade, guys, we got the net income of 20%, free cash flow 5%, revenue 100%, assets minus liabilities 35%, cash flow minus liabilities 5%, shares of standing of 45%. Overall grade, it is a 36%. 
biggest, biggest hurt right here, it is this free cash flow. Very, very, very bad. I mean, you guys just heard me say it, right? Decreasing cash from operations, overall decreasing on the five year. It's just a bunch of red flags, guys. It really is. If the cash flow and the net income were similar to that of the revenue, I would have easily given them like 80% plus. But it wasn't it really really wasn't so 36 percent, guys it is my final score when it comes to this company it's definitely a pass for me at least when it comes to their fundamentals but let us actually see what the valuation actually tells us using this kind of free cash flow now without inputting any numbers and just keeping the required rate of return at 10 percent, guys not adjusting for debt this is at 11 dollars 58 and then adjusting for debt it comes down to a negative 19 dollars so from what it's looking like uh we're not going to take a look at these after debt but not adjusting for debt, let us actually see. So let's come over here seeking alpha. We can see that the forward is estimated at 8%. So let's put in the numbers. Let us put in over here 4%, 6%, and 8%. Very, very similar to the one that we just did earlier today. However, for the predicted share buyback, I'm going to say negative one, zero, and one percent pretty much in line with what they're doing right now and now with that get the target share prices not adjusting for debt of thirteen dollars and 21 cents to fifteen dollars and 45 cents not adjusting for debt it is negative seventeen dollars and 12 cents to negative fifteen dollars and 49 cents now full stop before anybody says anything no your numbers are wrong no no you're wrong you don't okay okay let me bring you guys to another aspect of my calculator and that is the book value calculator for those of you who don't know there are different methods of calculating intrinsic value which by the way this is what this is telling me i'm not predicting that the company is going to fall to this what this calculator is saying it is hey the intrinsic value of the company should be worth this much based off of future revenues, future incomes, and future cash flows, as well as future projected share buyback or projected shares that the company issues. This is what this kind of free cash flow does. It brings it back to today, and then we get to see, okay, this is what we should be paying for this company today based off of these future cash flows, because every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. However, there is another way to analyze companies, and ironically enough, I, this is actually Warren Buffett's favorite way to analyze the intrinsic value of companies, and that is using book value per share and if we take a look at the book value guys it is essentially assets minus liabilities divided by the total shares outstanding and if we do that for this company as of today the book value is estimated at $24.80 this is a decrease on the five year of five percent and not only that there is another form of book value called tangible book value which essentially takes away anything that is non-tangible only keeps in the tangible things divides that by the shares outstanding and then we get this value and honestly some people actually think that this is more accurate than the other one because this one tells you all their real assets the, the, their physical assets i guess you could say nothing paper related so this one it is negative 16 dollars and 13 cents now remember these numbers so it was 24 dollars and 80 cents and 16 ne sorry negative 16 dollars and 13 cents look at back at the calculator guys the highest one it is $15.45 and the lowest one $17 sorry negative $17.12 that's pretty in line with what the book value is saying and again the book value is taken from seeking alpha there is no math involved here so as it currently stands even with this kind of free cash flow and book value guys with a current share price of $149.46 this is looking very very expensive and if we take a look at these ratios the price divided by these book values we can see that it is 6.03 and for the price divided by the current tangible book value, I mean, it's negative. I don't even know what to say about this one. But basically, at 1.00, it is at value. And this is already at 6. So the fact that book value is telling me that it's overpriced, as well as my discounted free cash flow, guys, it's overpriced. Unfortunately, it is. The company just isn't giving me what I want in the form of free cash flow, revenues, and net incomes in the future for me to justify this valuation of, 100, of almost $150. So that's my two cents on this. Obviously, this is not financial advice this is why i have these calculators available for the cheap cheap price of nine dollars and 99 cents i'm just kidding guys it is for free because i do not believe in anything behind like a paywall especially when, when it comes to this stuff my purpose for this channel it is to teach you guys and, and i really do mean that it is to teach you guys to learn how to invest in the proper way that minimizes the risks because at the end of the day minimizing risk it is pretty much everything and i'm here to provide i, I guess like a live example 
of my strategy. I mean, when I made the goals for 2023, one of my goals was, hey, I want to beat the S&P 500. That's my goal for this year. For, for, for year to date, my goal is for my portfolio, my Charles Schwab portfolio, to beat the S&P 500. I don't care if it beats it by 1%, 2%, 20%, 100%. As long as it beats it, that's all that matters to me. Because at the end of the day, that is proof that, hey, what you pay for, what value you pay for something is going to make all the difference. The more you pay for something today, the less returns you're going to have in the future. That's just fact. It's math. The less you pay for something today, the more return you're going to have in the future. And this idea of, hey, okay, the company is worth $150. I'm not going to pay $150 because the intrinsic value should be worth at around like you know 15 like 24 dollars that right there will maximize your gains when this company actually falls to this much and then you buy at this point because th this is when you like it right at that point if the company then turns around and starts zooming right back up your gains are going to be significantly higher than that of the person that bought it at 150 dollars so that's essentially what i'm trying to teach you guys this is why again I have all of these for free. I got this discounted free cash flow. I got the book value as well as a revaluation calculator for companies, for real estate companies, um, and even a dividend tracking sheet. So please have this all for free, guys. It's all on me. All I ask for in return is just help me grow my channel. Thank you so much for all the love, for all the support, for all the people who lurk, for all the people who comment. I really do appreciate it, guys. I'm trying my best to try and get a couple of my friends that know a bunch of other things aside from fundamental analysis to actually make videos for the channel and, you know, I guess to be on my payroll. But uh, yeah, I would want them to make more videos because they know stuff that I don't. For example, one of my friends, he made a video on the Greeks a couple days ago and he's really really good when it comes to technical analysis which i suck at so you know something like that is what i'm trying to do so that way i can provide everybody else more content more more value all for free all i'm asking for in return is just help me grow my channel like subscribe comment and of course share share with your friends share with your families if somebody wants to start learning how to invest be like Oh yeah, you know, this guy, you know, he's been doing this and he shows it. But also something too. I showed my portfolio. I have shown my portfolio here a lot, actually. So I'm not afraid to show you guys my, my gains or my losses because at the end of the day, that's proof that what I'm doing actually works. So I'm terribly sorry for that rant. I just figured I'd say it. Let's actually take a look at this company's dividends at the current price. So putting in $5,725, this buys you 38.31 shares, which at the current annual dividends per share of $2.12. This nets you $81.21, quarterly of $20.30, and a monthly of $6.77. Let us do an experiment. Let us actually change up here this current share price to um, let's say what the book value actually said, which is what, like at around $24.80. Let's actually do that. And let's put over here $24.80. Let's actually see, guys, assuming that they keep their dividend yield the same, or at least, sorry, the annual amount per dividend is the same, $2.12. Let's actually see how much in dividends you would get if this were to fall down to around $25. Bucks. Look at this, guys. $480. Nine dollars and forty-two cents for five thousand seven hundred and twenty-five dollars. Take a look at that, four hundred and eighty-nine. What was it before? Let's actually see. What was it before? Eighty-one. That is a major, major, major change. That that I mean, come on, guys. L look at this. With twenty-four dollars and eighty cents, that is forty dollars per month. Well, it's forty-one dollars per month. I mean, at least this will pay for like a subscription service that you have, right? Like a gym or like a Disney Plus or whatever. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. And why? Because at the end of the day, it's what you pay. $25, you know, book value, this is what this is saying. You're going to get a lot more than if you were to pay, obviously, $150. I mean, only $6.77 per month. So, as it currently stands, this is looking overpriced overall. And on top of that, guys, weighted grades, 36%. Just, it's not, not doing it for me. All in all, thank you so much, Doug, for the company, the recommendation. I really do appreciate it. By the way, clank to you, good sir. And you know exactly what that means if, if you watch this video. Uh, and 
again, the the company is it's just not there for me. The the, the fundamentals just aren't there. The valuation is way too overvalued in both a book value and a discounted free cash flow approach. So in my personal opinion, I would skip on this one. But anyways, guys, that pretty much does it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube. You guys can follow me on my new tech sites. Link in the description below. So with that said, peace out, and I will see you all in the next stock analysis of video.